Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. Today, Orit Esselin and Joe Tolentino are going to help us to get customers from YouTube when our channel does not get lots of views or have lots of subscribers. Now, for us to get to know Arit and Jewel a little bit better, I've got three questions for them. Uh, first one is for Jewel. Jewel, what is the wildest thing that you have ever done? So the wildest thing I have ever done is I'm afraid of heights. And in 2019, on January 1st, I was going to Vegas and I've always wanted to push my limits with this whole height thing because uh, whenever I'm up high or hiking or something, I get pretty scared. So when I went to Vegas on January 1st, 2019, you know, the Stratosphere Hotel, well, they have this thing where you jump off. It's kind of like a base jump. You're attached to ropes and stuff. And it's on the 120th something floor, almost a thousand feet. And I jumped off that on January 1st. I wanted to um, start the year off with a bang. And here's a photo of me. <laughs> out of my mind. I, I YouTubed it. I recorded it. I made an episode out of it. And um, yeah, it was the scariest thing I've ever done. I, I love the terror on your face. <laughs> All right. My next question is, is firstly for Orit and, and the same question for Jewel. What is the best decision that you have ever made, Orit? That would have to be deciding to not go for the path that I was supposed to be on, which was going into medical school. Um, and instead deciding to do what I really wanted to do and become a creative entrepreneur. I'm a multi-passionate creative entrepreneur. I love music. I love design. So I was actually supposed to, I, I was, I, I took the MCAT twice. So I was very much down that road, took all the prerequisites to get into med school. And I just really realized that that's not something that I wanted to do. Uh, that was really the best decision I've ever made in my life that trickled everything else that followed after it, which Beautiful. you're about to learn more about. <laughs> and the world is happy you made that decision. <laughs> so same question now uh, for, uh, for Jewel. Uh, the best decision I've ever made was in 2008, I found the book, The Secret, and I read it in one go. Literally, I bought it, went to my car, started reading it, couldn't stop reading it. At the end of the book, it was like, I, it took me about three hours to read it. At the end of the book, I said, I'm going to become an entrepre entrepreneur now. And I honestly had no idea that I actually wanted to do that because prior to that, my jobs were working at Starbucks, working at McDonald's. I worked at an insurance company and I never knew I could have a life like this that with YouTube. So that was the best decision I ever made. Ah, beautiful. Now, this question is an Orit special, an Orit exclusive. Mm -hmm. What is the best piece of advice anyone has ever given you? Well, they haven't given it to me personally, but it came out of this book called Atomic Habits uh, by James Clear. And he says in this book to always get 1% better, no matter what it is, just get 1% better. And whether you're tackling a massive project, a big decision in your life, even a small project that might be really like technical and difficult to understand, no matter what it is, how big or small, there's always something that you could do to just improve things 1%. So with that kind of, it's, it's almost like, it's like a magic wand because having that in my mind constantly, I can, I always know that I can move something forward no matter what and not think and not have to think about this big daunting task in front of me yeah. that's really a, a massive piece of advice that I use like on the daily and it's a great book I highly recommend it if you haven't read it Atomic Habits beautiful one percent one percent ideally a day is a massive transformation over the course of a short period of time well done mm -hmm. okay now participants some messages for you uh, please turn on your video, if at all possible. Uh, Jewel and, uh, and Orit, get their energy from you 
And when they have to look at a black box with a name in it, you can appreciate how it's not exactly energizing. So if you can, join us. Secondly, uh, stay muted. And when you have test questions, type them into the chat. Uh, about every 10 minutes, I will aggregate your questions and pose them to Orit and Jewel. Rest assured, by the end of the time together, your questions will all have been answered. Now, the recording of Arit and Jewel's workshop is going to be available in a few hours on uh, EIN's YouTube channel, and I will post that into the chat over the course of their workshop. Uh, you will be sent a link to the recording of their workshop, and that is not likely to be tonight, much more likely to be sometime tomorrow. Now, finally, uh, if you're hearing impaired, you will notice in the navigation bar on the bottom of your screen a rather strange box, and it's called Live Transcript, and it says CC on the button. CC is closed captions. If you would rather read than listen, click on that button and enable it, and you will see closed captions uh, come up. I'm going to do that. Uh, and my closed captions is now on. What this means is that in addition to the files I get when I convert the, the video, I will get a transcript of uh, Jewel and Arit's talk, and I'll be able to provide that to them so they can uh, 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 read in detail uh, what it was they said. Another advantage. Okay, now we are moving to the point where it's time for me to step back, introduce Arit and Jewel. Are you ready to knock our socks off, ladies? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> then take it away. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, Roger. Well, welcome, everybody. My name is Orit. O-R-E-E-T is a way that you can remember it. And uh, this right here is Jewel. Hey, everybody. And today we want to show you how much of a gold mine YouTube can be for your business and getting you customers and getting you new revenue, new business in creating leverage for your business in terms of your own time, which you'll see how that all unfolds. And I heard some of you have already YouTube channels or maybe you're just kind of curious about YouTube. Maybe you have a channel that's not really doing much for you and you know you can be doing more with it and you wanna be more consistent with it. Um, or maybe you know, you're a coach or an entrepreneur and you, you have all of this knowledge and you want to reach a larger audience, you want to get more traffic to your products and services, we all have different goals for what we want our channel to do for us. So that is really key to remember is to ask yourself, if you do have a YouTube channel, what do you want your YouTube channel to do for you? And I want to let you know that you are in the right place and for the next 45 minutes, 50 minutes or so, this is gonna be worth your time. And we're really excited to reveal exactly what, what we did with our YouTube channel to, to go from zero to five figures a month in our business. This is what allowed us to go full-time in our business. And we do this full-time. So your takeaway is we're gonna talk about four key focus areas that will turn your YouTube channel into a profitable channel. Now I say four key focus areas because there's so many different things you can be doing on YouTube, right? It's this daunting, overwhelming project that you got filming the video, you have planning it, you have end screens and thumbnails, and you know there's so many different things to do. But if you know what to focus on, your time and effort can really output significant results. So the truth is you don't need to know how to do everything on YouTube. You just need to know what to do that matters most. And we're all about efficiency here and working smarter, not harder, creating systems, creating leverage and doing things in a manageable way. So I'm gonna show you what those, core, those four key focus areas are. And we're gonna talk a little bit about both of them. Make sure you have a notepad ready or come back, watch the recording because there's going to be a ton of stuff in here. 
So right off the bat, I want to get this out of the way because I know some people are thinking this. YouTube is not saturated. Yes, there are billions of videos on the platform, but it's not saturated. And I say that because we've seen this time and time again, that no matter how much competition you have, it really, I mean, it becomes insignificant when you think about it because you are on video. And just by you presenting yourself, explaining things in a certain way, people are gonna vibe with your personality and your energy entirely different than this other person over here, even though you're explaining the exact same things. And you also don't need to go viral or have a big audience to see significant results. We've seen some of our, our core students and our YouTube coaching clients create a ton of revenue, even from you know, less than a thousand subscribers on their channel or even less than a hundred views on their videos. So let's first start off by introducing a little bit about us. And this is our YouTube channel. Jill will tell you a little bit about our backstory. Yep. So we're Esatino Media and I'm Jewel. This is Arit. And we're best friends from high school. So we've known each other since we were like 12 or 13 years old. Back then, I didn't even know how to pronounce Arit's name. I would just say, hey, as most people want to go to the cafeteria, <laughs> get some chips or something. But anyways, we went to high school, have known each other since grade eight to grade 12. And we were kind of living these scripted lives. So my parents wanted to become, wanted me to become a Filipino nurse and Arit's parents wanted her to become a Jewish doctor. And those are real stereotypes. And we were kind of going on those paths. And after high school, as I previously mentioned, I found the book, The Secret in 2008. So after high school, I was just kind of mulling around life taking different jobs, working at McDonald's, working at Starbucks until I found that book. And honestly, that's what started everything. When I read that book, I was telling Arit, I'm like, hey, let's become entrepreneurs. I had no idea what kind of entrepreneur I wanted to become. In fact, our first business idea was to become a, a greeting card company because at the time in high school, I was only good at art. Like I took like sculpting or photography in high school and re made greeting cards. So we just said, hey, let's start a greeting card company. Obviously that didn't pan out. And from, we started that in 2009 and from 2009 to 2015, we were doing a whole bunch of different things, trying to find our footing, trying to find our way, trying to find the thing that worked for us. And in 2015, it was YouTube. And we realized video, that we like video, we like the whole system, the interaction with everyone. And that's pretty much how our YouTube journey got started. Yeah, and three, three years after, so we took YouTube seriously in 2015, three years after being serious with the channel, uploading consistently and doing some of the things that you'll learn about, we went full-time into this business um, we were before the channel doing web design um, services and a few other things as well. Just basically whatever we learned, we would help other people who wanted those things. Uh, and then we leveraged our knowledge, all of this knowledge that we had in the form of video. And Estatino Media is all about, uh, we have content that is all, all under the umbrella of helping you create profitable content, create a create an online business that works for you. So that involves social media tutorials, that involves, you know, video editing tutorials, talking about business tools, uh, you know, even just telling our stories, mindset stuff. We'll throw up a vlog here and there, just like Jewel's stratosphere jump. Um, so it's really like, it's a reflection of us and our brand. And Right now we have over 45,000 subscribers, but I want to, and I don't know if you can see this on the recording if you're watching on YouTube, but I want to point your attention to some of these views on the video. So there's this one video here that has 197 views. There's another one that has 98, another one 110, 117. So that's not that much, right? That's not that many views. Uh, and I'm pointing this out because most most people they look at these views and they're like oh like what's the point what's the point of doing this channel you know that person's not making any money or oh they bought their subscribers it just the ratio doesn't make sense right 
But there's just so many things going on that people don't understand behind the scenes. These views that are coming to our channel are from non-subscribers. Most of the time when, you know, if you have like a, a, a trending or vlog type channel, you're doing viral videos, you're, tr you're trying to do that whole game, your views are mainly going to come from subscribers upon releasing a video. So you're going to shoot up in those initial views. With us, it doesn't work that way because what we do is we release tutorial based, education based videos for the most part. And these videos are optimized so that people find our content in the search results of YouTube and Google. So those videos, they accumulate, they may not get many initial views, but they accumulate those views over time, kind of like a fine aging wine. So our YouTube channel is not the typical YouTube channel. We are a tutorial based YouTube channel. And before we got into YouTube in 2015, we were entrepreneurs first in the business world here locally in Vancouver, attending networking events and things like that. So we learned a lot of entrepreneurial skills. And we took that and we put that on YouTube. Most people think, hey, let me vlog myself going to the ice cream store a bunch of times and maybe that'll go viral, right? So we, our approach is completely different. And that's why our initial videos don't get views because not every single subscriber is going to want to watch every single type of tutorial that we do. They might. We have some super fans that definitely do. But for the most part, people find us as non-subscribers. They watch our videos because we give full value in our videos. We're always focused on helping the person in the video. And they, they reward us by giving us a, a subscribe. So that's why initially you can see that there, there's low views. But even if you have low views, like we've had videos that have had less than 100 views, but have made, you know, a couple thousand dollars. So it's it, if you understand how the marketing works, advertising works, it's it's you'll you'll be able to make money easier on YouTube. And views don't necessarily equal more money. Like more views is not a direct correlation to more money. Um, this channel consistently earns us anywhere between $2,000 to $4,000 a month in ad revenue alone. Uh, and when you add that to the other revenue streams that we've built into the channel, which again, we'll talk about that in a little bit here, we, you know, that's what, that's where we come up with the five figures a month, which just kind of fluctuates like that, but it's consistently at that. So are, let's you, start uh, off. are you open for a couple of questions? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's All do right. It. The first question is from Diane Ralston. I've looked at some of their videos that your videos, which are great. I'm curious as to what you used to record the screen share and circle video of yourselves. So that is a video editing software called Camtasia. And the reason why I use it and why I recommend it is because it's very user friendly to use. A lot of entrepreneurs, online teachers use Camtasia. You can use, you know, Adobe, Adobe Premiere, Final Cut Pro and all that kind of stuff, but it's it's um it has like crazy features, right? I mean, people edit movies on that but Camtasia is super user friendly and I do tutorials on Camtasia pretty much every Wednesday and I teach people how to edit on Camtasia. Great and uh, Shanice wants to know what does it mean to optimize a video? Optimize a video. Yeah so optimizing a video basically means optimizing it for the search engines so that when someone types something into the search, we want your video to come up if it's on that similar topic. So I'll talk about that. Um, those are in the upcoming, some of the upcoming slides. We'll talk about that a little bit more. And it's a Camtasia. So C-A-M-T-A-S-I-A. -A -A. Yeah, I'll put it in the chat. There you go. Yeah, and optimizing basically means your titles, tags, descriptions, and YouTube thumbnail. Jason wants to know, how many subscribers do you need on your channel to monetize your videos? 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours to be monetized by YouTube and slash Google, but you can make money from your channel at any subscriber number. You can have less than 1,000 subscribers to, make, to earn money as a small channel. And we'll talk about these uh, revenue streams. That's actually coming up in the next few slides. 
And Wanda wants to know, how do you suggest getting to 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours so the channel can start monetizing? That's with YouTube SEO. So that's how we've grown our channel is through organic search. We like to uh, um, monetize our videos this way because when you have someone typing into the search and your video comes up, that creates a stronger connection, I feel. And it's how we get a lot of our coaching clients, our design clients, is through this method. Great. Uh, how are watch hours defined, asks Anastasia. It's when people watch your videos and then it counts how many minutes and then it goes to your total watch time in, in your dashboard. How can I prevent people from copying my video content, asks Christy. You can't people copy all the time. Uh, you yeah. just have to, you have to be consistent. You, you have to outlast people. Most people don't last on YouTube because it doesn't work fast enough for them or they get tired or they don't have a system. Mines Brodsky asks, do you use YouTube slash Google ads to grow your channel? No, no, it's all and organic. A lot of these questions, guys, we'll be answering them in the upcoming slides. How do you come up with video ideas? Asks Matthias. Well, you have to talk Free. about you yeah, have to talk about what you know. First of all, don't don't do videos on stuff you don't know. So if you if you're talking about things that you know, then what we do is like we like to break it off into little things. So for example, Camtasia, the video editing software. I can talk about Camtasia as a whole, but I literally talk about every single feature in Camtasia. So like every single button and I break it off into chunks that way. Uh, and also frequently asked questions. That's a great way to come up with video ideas. So when if, if you have people who are always asking you questions about a certain topic, then you can create videos out of those things as well. You can if you don't have anyone that you've communicated with yet, you don't have clients, customers, then you can head over to forums, you can head over to other YouTube videos, look in the comment section. Those are always great places to find video ideas. And the last question in this piece is, would you please expound on system? You used the term system earlier. So yes, we have many systems to get our YouTube channel going. So like systems to film videos or systems to edit videos. Um, we'll dive deeper into the actual presentation on how we actually run the YouTube machine. Yeah. I'm gonna throw in another question. Ah, they keep coming. Off you go back to the content. 10 minutes <laughs> from now, I'll ask you a bunch more. Sure, okay, awesome. Sounds good. Okay, so let's start with the first key focus area, which is to optimize your channel's ability to produce income. So remember, there's four areas that you're going to be focusing on to make the most out of your video content. So the first is we want to have these videos produce income, right? So we need to think about multiple income streams. We need to think about what's actually in the video content. And you need to think about giving people call to actions. So when I say call to actions, it's actually telling people in the video to head down to the description, to click on your link, or to let them know that you have a related video. If they enjoyed this one, they can watch the following video and you'll link to that in the description. So we want you to focus on these three things, income streams, your content, and your call to actions as we go through these, uh, these income streams. So the first one we talked a little, we touched upon it, the ad revenue. So this is YouTube's way of um, providing or giving money back to their creators. And when you hit 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, you're going to get monetized by YouTube, which basically means you're able to join their partner program and earn ad revenue on your videos. And so just looking at this one income stream, ad revenue, you can see here that uh, I took the screenshot in February. So last 28 days. So this is the, the month of February, $2,073.58. Uh, $2, this is in US revenue. So uh, that's US more dollars, like 2,500 to close to 3,000, depending on what's happening. Yeah. And um, in the monthly estimated revenue, you could see here it's consistent 2,300, 2,400. 
2400 1900 so all of these things i'm showing this to you because some people don't believe that you're able to earn from the ad revenue because most people think oh it's just cents right you're just earning a tiny amount but tiny adds up and it's funny because a lot of um, other youtubers say that ad revenue is peanuts compared to other revenue streams um, or other ways that you can make money which it can be is true comparatively you can earn a lot more revenue selling your products and services from your videos but two to four thousand dollars a month from ad revenue is not peanuts and guys we don't have a single viral video on the channel we really don't and we're not even niched down right you saw we create videos on multiple topics talking about different things but it's under that umbrella of creating profitable content helping others entrepreneurs grow their business online so and, and the I, other thing i was just going to say and yeah. during the beginning parts of the pandemic our google ad revenue went up to like 5000 it was crazy cuz everybody was online yes. right Every, everybody was just trying to figure out what was happening and yeah there were months where it was like 5000 in google ad revenue and that's not like yeah it is not peanuts when you're getting that and you know we're in a highly competitive market the social media marketing right um and tutorials for entrepreneurs uh so i want to point this out because i want you to see that more views does not necessarily equal more ad revenue or uh, any other type of revenue for that case so we're going to talk about some of the other revenue streams as well, regardless of whether you're monetized yet. So even if you don't have the 1000 subscribers, you haven't reached this monetization program, you can make money without the without ad revenue. And regardless, your goal should be to maximize your revenue wherever you're currently at. So here are some of the other revenue streams that you can build in that this is what we have in our channel. but. There's other ones too, but just to give you an idea for our channel, so we have active revenue streams, meaning these are our services that we provide. So we do tell people to, if they find, if they find this YouTube tutorial helpful, right? This is a video on our channel and you would like more one-on-one -on -one help, we do offer YouTube coaching, head down to the description below. We also offer design and branding services. So I sometimes do uh, design tutorials on the channel because it's part of content creation. So we offer that. There's course implementation. And then there's these other passive. So the, these active is whatever product or service you offer in your business, right? And then there's these other passive income streams, meaning they're, they're digital products for the most part. Uh, online courses that we've created. We've packaged our knowledge into an online course affiliate commission so if you don't have your own product or service but you you taught you really uh, find other people's products or services helpful maybe you use certain tools certain softwares uh, certain gear um, it could be anything right it doesn't just have to be like tech stuff then you can give you can talk about that product and how it's helped you how it's benefited you and link to that in the description where people can get it and you will earn a small commission off of that. But again, remember, tiny adds up, right? And uh, live streaming is also a way of earning. You actually get donations when you're live streaming. You know, if you're providing a ton of value and you're you're sharing absolutely everything with sharing your knowledge with other people, people will support you. They love to support you. So you're probably looking at this and you're like how the heck do i build out so many income streams you know i can barely stay afloat with just releasing one video on the channel um which by the way we'll talk about consistency as well i'll, sh I'll share our system with you and how we stay consistent on the channel and you know plus you got to service clients on top of everything else and so to that i just want to say that you know you don't have to have all of these revenue streams you can do really well with just one or two of these and we actually have a client of ours or a youtube client of ours who did just that yeah so these are um are uh, we we manage their youtube channel they're called investor life and they are real estate investors from edmonton alberta and we run their youtube channel and the the crazy thing is is um they do live streams every tuesday they're actually probably live streaming right now as well yeah. on their channel and i extract footage 
uh, repurpose footage from their live stream. So they do about an hour live stream on their channel and they don't even really film uh, designated videos for their channel. I just like pick little pieces from their like clips, you know, from their live stream and then um, do the thumbnail and do the SEO and stuff, search engine optimization and put it up on their channel. And as you can see, they have less than 2000. They're at like 1. 1,800 subscribers. Also their videos uh, right now get less than a hundred views. And, but here's the cool thing is uh, they made a $10,000 sale on one of their videos because what they do is they provide amazing knowledge about real estate investing. And then down in the description, which is the money maker, they put a link to their Facebook group. And this Facebook group is where they get people into doing free boot camps and things like that. And they, they managed to make a $10,000 sale, which is a one year uh, thing to their program. So they have a real estate investing program and it costs $10,000 a year. And they were so happy when it came from YouTube because they, they, they too were like, oh, how can, you know, how can we make sales on YouTube? You know, we don't really create videos and things like that. We explained, you know, the system to them and now they love it. They, they love their YouTube channel. And they, it's just from repurposing their content that they, they were good at, or they are good at, but they're more used to releasing these other pieces of content on Facebook, right? So it's repurposing it and putting it on YouTube. So you could do something like that. Um, and they're not even monetized yet. Yeah. You know, they haven't reached Almost. their 1000 subscriber or the 4,000 watch hours. They're at like 3,400. So they still have like yeah. 600 more hours to go. So what's happening? Like what, why did that video make the $10,000 sale? Right. What, what is the money making thing behind all of this? It's your content. It's your video because, and I, I like to call it triple threat content because this is what your video does is it does it, it establishes trust because you're providing value. And I know a lot of people say that, but value essentially means you're, you're educating, you're inspiring, you're motivating, you're, you know, maybe giving the viewer a different perspective or a new way to think about a certain topic. So all of these things establish trust. And because you're creating a video on a certain topic, and if you're optimizing it for the search engines, then you're going to be attracting the right viewer because they were looking for that piece of content. So your, your video is almost like pre-qualifying your viewers because your viewers become your ideal buyers in a sense. You're creating content around um, problems that they, they deal with, challenges, how to do certain things. Um, you know, it could be a broad overview on a certain, like five, you, I'm sure you guys have seen like, five tips on the specific topic, right? This is why we love tutorial videos or because very specific, yeah. someone's typing in a specific question, we create a video answering that specific question mm -hmm. and you help them out for free. And if they like your personality, they'll go to the description, they'll click on your links, they'll buy your course, they'll follow you, you know? So that's kind of the system. Yeah. And of course, we want to have our call to actions there. And that's where the description comes in of your video. So by, you know, by doing this, um, you're actually creating leverage with every single video on your channel because your video has a longer shelf life on YouTube than it does on other social media platforms. People still find our videos and comment on them from ones that we've released from like 2016. Um, they're still finding them, benefiting from them, and then checking us out, whether that's through our website or other things as well. So each YouTube video has the potential to earn for years to come. If you think about that, that kind of leverage, uh, you can really start to see the power that your content has. And always, 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 you know, whatever your video is about, put your links in the description and make them relevant to the topic that you're talking about. So to give you an example, this was a video, um, why we make 2000 to $4,000 a month from ad, YouTube ad revenue. So we were, we're basically, you know, talking about a limiting belief around YouTube and, which is another great, by the way, another great place to come up with video ideas. Talk about limiting beliefs that people have, that your market has about your specific topic. 
So with that video, you know, because it's YouTube related, we have these other uh, resources available for YouTubers that they'll benefit from. And we put them in the description. We make sure the description is easy to navigate, right? Don't just dump a whole bunch of links in there. People aren't going to know what to click on. Guide them. You want to guide exactly. them, make it visually appealing, use emojis because it really catches people's yeah. attention. I We were doing a test on this. Initially, we had those first two top links without the emojis, right? And then we put the emojis on there and we get way more emails now and way more course sales with that, with that visual um, emoji there. And, you know, I specifically chose those ones because they're eye catching and they're ones that are not really that typical. And as long as the, the call to action is relevant. So we put a call to action to opt into our list. We put, we put our YouTube coaching in there. We put, you know, if it, if we have a YouTube course, it's different call to actions, right? But we put all of them there in the description, but in the video, we'll just mention one, one call to action. Because if you're just mentioning one, you're just simplifying the whole process for them and they'll discover those other call to actions anyways in the description. Ready for some questions? Sure. Yeah, sure. It's probably best in the interest of time that only one of you answer each question uh, yeah. as, as opposed to two. Uh, your channel has about 10 million video views in the about channel section. This is mm -hmm. huge. I have seen this with others as well. How can your views be so high with the individual views not being anywhere near this? Yeah, Great so that's, question. that's the baffling question, right? Well, one, right off the bat, we have 1600 videos on our YouTube channel. So remember when we were saying all those small ones, they add up, well, they add up in views and they add up in Google ad revenue as well. We're a tutorial based channel so that uh, we talk about different uh, entrepreneurial topics. And so everyone's not interested in that. If I, if I did a YouTube channel on Camtasia only, the video editing software, and I released only Camtasia tutorials, I would probably have more views per video, but in the long run, would I have been able to do a Camtasia YouTube channel for what, five, six years? Probably not. So for us, we like talking about different topics so that we don't have YouTube burnout and give up on our channel like a lot of people do. When they initially start one that's so niche down, and then it's like, okay, you've talked about everything about that topic, now what? So we're thinking of the long-term as well. Uh, Liet wants to know, what do you enjoy most when filming your videos? This had to be like an acquired thing for me. I, cause you know, at, in the beginning, getting on camera just felt really awkward. I'm much better in person speaking to people in person, but this happened over time and now it's, it's what I enjoy most. And it's this, it's looking into the camera and just envisioning that other person on the other side, benefiting from whatever knowledge that I'm sharing or, you know, me saying something that's going to really help them. I actually visualize like one, either one of our coaching clients or, you know, someone from our community that I know. Um, and it really just helps me get into that headspace as if I'm talking to a real person. And I just, that's what I enjoy most about filming. Right. So there's another question and whoever doesn't answer the next question, could you type the name of your channel into the chat for Hamid? Mm -hmm. The next question is, should I, should I use Facebook or YouTube for my live streams? I call it the Able Marketing Facebook Lives. Okay, so should I use Facebook or YouTube? So we like YouTube because it has a longer shelf life. I, people always ask me, should I do YouTube or Instagram? Should I do YouTube or Facebook? Ideally, I mean, eventually you want to be on most of those platforms, but I like YouTube because you can upload something in 2016 and it still gets comments today. It has a longer shelf life. Typically on Facebook, you know, once it happens, maybe, maybe it'll last a week. You know, people aren't, I mean, maybe some people search on there, but it's not known to search something on there. It's known to search on Google and YouTube. And in, when you do searches on YouTube, the, sorry, on searches on Google, YouTube videos pop up because Google owns YouTube. Jason wants to know what software do you use to make your thumbnails? I design my thumbnails in Photoshop. 
But if you not if you don't know Photoshop, you can use PowerPoint or Canva or Canva. Matthias wants to know when do you present your call to action? Beginning of the video, midway, or end? Always at the end. We're a big believer in providing value first. I know everybody, we we do YouTube like the complete opposite of most people. Yeah. Most people will start the YouTube video and say, subscribe right at the beginning, but you've literally not given the viewer anything. So we always do it at the end. And even now we actually don't even ask for the subscribe because we get subscribers now um, pretty frequently that we don't need to ask. And we just direct them to the description where they can get our coaching, buy a course from us or buy something from our affiliate stuff. Jason wants to know, how did you change your mouse pointer to a laser pointer? <laughs> YouTube question. Um, PowerPoint's but, doing that. Yeah. I just like bottom left corner, just there's three dots and I just it selected it, the pen and then laser pointer. Random tip for you. Uh, do you use a teleprompter or a teleprompter app on your iPhone? I imagine this means to make your videos. So we don't use any of that kind of stuff. Um, like I said, you want to do videos on stuff you know how to talk about because uh, you want to simplify the process if you have to uh you know do a whole write up write it up and put it into the teleprompter and then have to read everything it's going to make the process a lot slower we do use a teleprompter when we're filming like really professional stuff promo videos but typically it's just uh, off the top of my head and i do bullet points on it like the main things i want to get to and then that's it so you got to work with, um, sorry, I, Roger, I know I'm not supposed to answer as well, but I just want to say you, you got to work with, with, with whatever is easiest for you, whether that's writing all of it out, scripting out your video and then having it in front of you or creating an outline. So for, for us, the outline works best than the teleprompter it doesn't mean that teleprompter using a teleprompter is wrong. No further questions back to you. And we have 20 minutes to go. All right, all right, let's race through this. Um, okay, so key focus area number two. So now that you've built income streams into the channel, how do you actually get traffic to your videos? So what we don't do is we don't buy views or subs and we do not recommend doing that because it could really hurt your channel. Uh, YouTube is extremely smart. It's an extremely smart platform, so it will know. And if it does, your asset, which is your channel is gone. So don't do that. Don't we we don't personally run ads. We don't need to run ads and we don't spend hours sharing our videos across multiple platforms. You can, but it's, you know, we're all about moving fast and consistency here. So here's what we do. The number one method that we use to get traffic to our videos is opting optimizing our videos for the search engines. So this basically means that we, op we, we do our keyword research around a single uh, phrase that we can rank for. And we do use a tool called TubeBuddy. I saw someone ask a question about that. So we do use TubeBuddy. And we put that keyword phrase in the title and the description and the tags in multiple areas because YouTube reads different places um, in, uh, in terms of to, to basically tell YouTube that this is on this topic and to bring it up when someone types it into the search engines. So in this way, we're able to rank on the first page uh, of for multiple topics on YouTube and Google as well. And with this method, our channel grows at about 124k views per month. And, you know, we, we do this because we have, again, a system, a framework, a five-step method that involves the keyword research and knowing what to put in your title, your tags, your description, all of that metadata when you go to upload your video. So, and this can be done in like, like less than 20 minutes. So I know a lot of people hear SEO, search engine optimization, and, and they think it's quite daunting, but you don't need to be technologically savvy because we have tools like TubeBuddy that if you know how to use it properly, um, it can really work to your advantage. And we've taught our SEO method to thousands of our students who didn't know anything about YouTube SEO at all. And I'll share a link to, to that um, at the end of the presentation so you guys can get a special discount on that. I know we don't have time to go into it. But really quickly, Roland, he, you know, retired outdoorsman, handyman from Ontario, Canada, didn't know anything about SEO, 
Yeah, so he has a uh, fix it channel. So he he lives out like on an acreage type thing and in um, Ontario. And he used to work for General Motors for like many, many years, I think 20 plus years. He retired and we randomly met online and he messaged me about YouTube. And I told him, yeah, we do YouTube. We put these tutorials out and things like that. And he took our YouTube SEO course and he started doing his own thing. And he makes YouTube videos. Look, look, you can see there, he makes, he's making like a thing about a sink, like how to fix the drain and the sink. Yeah. That video has made him a lot of Google ad revenue. And he doesn't even have a lot of subscribers. Like at around five to 6,000 subscribers, he was all, already making a thousand dollars a month in Google ad revenue, just the Google ad revenue. He doesn't have any products or services. He's just, the you know a guy living out in the woods just making videos and he doesn't have courses or anything like that but he's already doing a thousand a month uh with our strategy yeah and also doesn't do like paid ads or anything so you know just get really good at seo whether it's you know using the five-step method that we'll share with you at the end or just doing your own research this this one thing can really help you get traffic consistently to your channel on an ongoing basis and it also attracts new targeted views. So you're not just getting views from people who are subscribed to you, but you're constantly bringing in new viewers, new potential leads, new buyers and fans of your work. And you do it once, like you do the, uh, the, the title tags, all of that stuff once on the video and you let YouTube do the rest. So again, creating leverage here. So we focus on building income with the channel, gaining traffic by ranking our videos in the search engine. So how the heck do you stay consistent with videos on the channel, right? This is something that I know a lot of people struggle with. Um, and I, I want you to know that it's just it just comes down to um, creating a system. Again, I'm using that word, a system that works for you that you could just kind of plug into over and over again. So here's what you know we don't want people to do. We don't want people to choose one video that they're gonna upload on, on the channel. And, um, oops, sorry, I'm just gonna get my pen out here. So choosing one video, they come up with one video idea, they go back and forth on whether it's a good idea. Um, and then they sort of settle on it. So they move on to planning the video and then, you know, they're like, oh, maybe that's not really a good idea. So let me go back up here, rework the idea, go back and forth. Okay, now I'm gonna plan it. Um, and then they finally spend time planning it, coming up with their outline, and then they move on to filming that video, right, which could take like to the end of the slide, <laughs> could take like a week or so to get you yourself set up. And, um, and then you have editing the video and, you know, we're, we're off the charts here. So this is what people do with just one video. And of course, it's not going to be manageable. Of course, you're not going to stay consistent with it because it's extremely stressful in this way to just be trying to get the one video out. And every time you're switching between these two, these uh, these separate tasks, the, the idea, the planning, the filming, you're actually losing 20% of your time. And so it's taking you forever to get that one video up when you have, you should be releasing at least one a week on the channel. Um, so what we want you to do is to increase your efficiency and your output. And this is what allows us to release three to four videos a week on the channel, sometimes even more like when it was um, the pandemic, we were releasing a lot more videos. We saw the opportunity with that and how everybody was online and we were releasing seven videos a day. Yeah, <laughs> like, a lot. Yeah, for like at least two months. It's not sustainable. That's not sustainable, but we saw the opportunity. <laughs> So this is how we do it. We batch our content. So what that means is we come up with more than one video at a time. So we have our planning stage where I'll personally plan out four videos at a time. I'll come up with those four ideas. I'll come up, I'll write all of the outlines. And this is within like a one to two hour session, right? It could be less, it depends on you, but it's just one appointment with yourself on the week where you're just planning out your videos. And if you get more than four videos, awesome. Then you move, you set a separate appointment with yourself to film all of those videos. For me, I can only get to filming four in one sitting and that's my max, but at least I've filmed all of those videos at once. 
and then you can kind of get the idea right the then you set a separate session with yourself to edit all of those videos and then to schedule all of those videos so in this batching sense this is how we're able to keep up with our our you know our publishing schedule and just release all of those videos uh, i'll skip this here in the interest of time so so you know this is like we talked about income we talked about traffic we talked about a system for staying consistent but really the main thing here this is what it all comes down to is your content and this is a, another key focus area that we spend time in and when i say profitable on the slide create profitable content it means providing value to the marketplace so it doesn't necessarily mean something that earns you dollars it means maybe you gain time from that content because you're finding you're explaining the same or answering the same question over and over again in your business and it would be great to just create this one video on your channel you can just send people there right so it might mean profitable in a sense of leveraging time gaining subscribers email opt-ins you're building your authority the video is creating leverage for you so it doesn't mean fancy production that's not what profitable content means because oftentimes you know, it, the best equipment doesn't necessarily mean that the video will perform the, uh, very well. In fact, we we use this setup, which is like everything you can get here for less than two hundred dollars on Amazon. And we filmed like over 90 percent of our videos on our channel. This is the exact setup that's happening right now. Yeah, <laughs> we're still using this setup today. And this webcam that we're using is from 2016. Yeah. And we love it. It's 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 an asset for us. This is this uh, webcam right here. So, what does profitable content mean? What we focus on is evergreen content. So that means your 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 content, the topics that you speak about, they're timeless. People can benefit them for years down the road. It's not something that's trending, um, which will die out. It's very short lived. So, evergreen content, the triple threat stuff that we were talking about earlier. And whenever you see something that works, do more of it. Double down on what works. So a few examples for you is um, come up with you know, some challenges, anything that your customers or clients struggle with, frequently asked questions. You could talk about client successes and use those as you know, stories. You could create story videos out of them. You could share your process or your work with others. Um, just simplify this, right? I know people are like, well, this is stuff like, this sounds good, like I already knew this, but honestly, if you just if you just do it, you can either be as broad or as specific you like in each single video. And that is what, you know, connects with people. It establishes trust. You'll attract the right viewer who is more likely to become a buyer because they were searching for those topics and you're giving them calls to action to come back into your world, find out more about you. So doing that over and over and over again, right? This is just one video doing these three things, but your entire channel is made up of all these videos. So what you're doing here is you're building authority on a bigger scale, you're generating leads, you're generating revenue because each video out there is your own personal sales and marketing person bringing people back into your world. So- A few questions. Okay, what's the name of the ring light? That you're you that you use. Okay, it's a weird no name brand. It's called UB Size. So I'll type that into the chat. Yeah. Okay. How long do you think videos uh, should be on average? So we get that question all the time, and there is no specific length. The length that it needs to be is to get your point across without doing the fluff. Okay. Always get to the point in your videos. Don't waste people's time. We have videos that are one to two minutes long that do well. And we have this video right here that is 20 minutes long, but has made 10,000 Canadian dollars. So it really doesn't matter as long as whatever you're talking about, you are getting to the point and you're giving the value in the video. How do you earn revenue through Google AdSense without running ads? Uh, so, you know, when you watch YouTube videos and you see a commercial and it, ha it has to play before you watch the video or if it lets if it plays for more than 30 seconds or the, the banners that come up, that is uh, part of the Google ad revenue program. And you make money whenever you watch when people watch the commercials. 
Do you recommend filming on phone shorts, quick videos on YouTube? We personally don't do short form content like that because we prefer, prefer long form content because we're wanting to create a connection with people. And I find that it needs to take more than 30 seconds or 50 seconds. So that's why we like doing the long form content. Uh, what camera are you using? I think Maria means what webcam are you using? It's the Logitech C930E webcam. No further questions, back to you. Okay, awesome. So yeah, really quickly, this is the just one example of creating profitable content. We um, used to sell on Etsy and I our audience is creative entrepreneurs, right? Creators, entrepreneurs, coaches, that type of thing. So a lot of those people do sell on Etsy uh, if you're an e-commerce based business. So I created a video on the cost of selling of how much does it cost to sell on Etsy? Cause that was a frequently asked question. and it did really well. It would, I did like, I put paint, like the paint MS paint program up. This was like three years ago and just drew out an example of selling a t-shirt and explaining all of the fees involved in selling that t-shirt. And with ad revenue, it, you know, this video that was three years ago, um, ended up making 3000 or actually no, that one was five. Was it it's it was 8, right 000, here, 5,000. Right? Yeah. And then I did, I redid oh, another yeah. version of it because Etsy made some changes to their fees. So two years ago, I released the new version. And then, so this topic alone has, you know, ended up in over $8,000 USD in ad revenue alone. It's produced coaching clients, which is just two or three, because it's funny. I didn't really have, I didn't have those call to actions in the descriptions, but people just saw this, reached out and, and asked, do you provide coaching? Um, and then, you know, uh, Etsy, their affiliate program. So if you, if you have a, you have your affiliate link in the description and people sign up for their Etsy store through your link, they don't give you like monetary commissions, but they do give you a free listing in your store. So uh, not just one, actually it's multiple free listings. So each listing is worth 20 cents. So I never had to pay for a listing ever again in our store uh, over a thousand dollars worth. So you can see here how there's multiple benefits coming just from this, this is just one, one video. video. Yeah, I was going to say this is one yeah. video. Yeah. What are your opinions and thoughts on sponsored videos? I'm fine with it as long as it, I mean, as long as don't promote stuff that you wouldn't buy yourself. So I, you know, I, I'm mm -hmm. a great believer in actually promoting the stuff that you use and um, doing it that way, but don't have a problem with sponsor videos. Shonice sews, her husband collects cigars and they together actively camp. Is that too much for one channel? They actively camp? Go camp. C-A-M-P. Oh, yeah, I can see that those yeah. things could go together, but... I don't know. What do you think? I, I would say like, it depends on your content. If you're creating a channel that's about you and your life and your family, and you're doing these, you're getting into different adventures and things, then it, it might work because you are the brand. But if you're creating like educational material on sewing, and then all of a sudden you have cigars and stuff, I don't think that would, would really work. Okay. Uh, you're making five figures a month and there's two of you working pretty full time. Have you ever calculated what your hourly income is? No, no. <laughs> to be honest. No, we have not. And like, we actually really like what we do. We live and breathe YouTube. So this beats whatever I was doing before this. Yeah, we don't fixate on, on things like that because we know that we're, you know, this is what we love doing. And that impact is just, it's like a ripple effect. And if you're doing, if you're doing more of that and you love it, then that's just like a minuscule thing, our hourly rate. Okay. <clears throat> but are you working pretty much full time at this, both of you? I mean, like we choose whatever, like, so if there's, if tomorrow comes, I'm like, I don't feel like working today. I don't, I'll go hang out with my sister or, you know, go hang out with my mom or something. Yeah. We literally choose when we want to work and when we don't want to work. Hey, yeah. Entrepreneurial freedom. No further questions. Back to you. Okay. Awesome. So to summarize guys, um, how do you get customers from YouTube and how do you scale your time and revenue with creating video content, releasing it? 
Um, I think some of you might have read this already, but you don't need tons of views and subs. You don't need to waste money on ads or spend your hours sharing your videos. You don't need to be tech savvy, scramble last minute to get a video out and have all this stuff be really stressful. Um, what you do need to focus on is building multiple income streams into your channel, optimizing your videos for search, using a, a system that works for you to produce content consistently. So for us, that's batching, doing multiple videos at once and having those set days with our, like we have appointments with ourselves where we're working on this one specific task so that it actually gets done. Creating quality content, using evergreen videos that build trust, and mastering one of these areas at a time before, before moving on to the next. So, you know, don't try to do all these things at once. If you haven't released your first video out on the channel, that is the first thing that you need to be focusing on and just create that first video, then create another. Then let's see how you can get more consistent and do the batching content system, right? So doing these one thing, uh, one mastering one of these at a time is going to be more manageable for you. So these are the pillars that we've talked about today is systemizing and optimizing these four pillars. And uh, if you want to know how to get started with implementing these more specifically step-by-step -step instructions for your YouTube channel, we do have a resource available for you. It's called the Profitable Channel, and it walks you through step-by-step -step how to set up each of these pillars to create content, stay consistent, get traffic, and make more money from your channel to create leverage with your channel so that you could start to generate monthly revenue and business, new business. So we share our entire Five figure a month framework in this course it's like we haven't officially launched it yet so um what we want to do for you is give you a really special offer you can go to the profitablechannel.com and instead of our pre-launch price which we're we're going to be launching with 247 to start off with but today you get it only for 147 if you're interested so what you need to do is if you, if you see this as valuable, you really wanna get into this, you wanna create an asset out of your YouTube channel, then you could head to theprofitablechannel.com and use the coupon code at checkout, EIN2022, and you'll be able to get that for 147. So thank you so much for your time. If you want to get in touch with us, just go to our website, asatinomedia.com. You could use our contact form there. Um, I believe our contact information as well is in the meetup. So thank you very much, everybody. Well, thank you, uh, Orit, and thank you, Jewel. You have covered uh, from here to Sydney, Australia, and back again in terms of scope of your talk. And yeah. you have done so even under these unusual circumstances, <laughs> virtually on time. Thank you, you. you are amazing. Thank you so, so very much. We appreciate that. Thanks, Roger. <laughs>